So I'm getting here with just uh, the overview of the five watersheds and want to proceed with recommendations for priorities that the Vegetation Committee presented and, and then also uh, go through uh, an idea for creating these blocks. Uh, the committee recommended at, uh, blocks of at least 300 acres uh, in, in order to, uh, to uh, follow the guidelines that are in the wildlife conservation strategy. So if, if we start out with the, uh, the, the theme that based on the WCS, it, one of the conclusions was that, uh, particularly in the non-lethal and mixed one fire regimes, the large tree size class, low canopy closure class is underrepresented. And I would add to that, it's not only underrepresented, but it's patchy. Uh, all these individual red stands that you see on the screen scattered across are the existing stands that meet those criteria. Uh, these are non-lethal or mixed one fire regimes. They are large tree size class and low canopy closure. Now, if we accept the idea, and I think the WCS does a good job of this, that uh, these were an important component of the, of the landscape uh, pre-settlement, and that they were relatively stable components combined with uh, the majority of the riparian areas, one way to approach the prior priorities is to begin with the existing stands that are in that desired condition and then build clusters around them uh, to create larger blocks in the desired condition. Now, the uh, Vegetation Committee presented last different priorities and beginning with priority one, which was uh, retain or enhance the large tree size class. So those stands that are in that size class but have a medium or uh, dense canopy closure uh, would be considered high priority. I'm showing those in, in brown and combined with that are the uh, stands that uh, Paul has identified as having a potential benefit for northern Idaho ground squirrel. So in, in a way, this is kind of a two-edged spatial priority. Uh, one, it's looking at stands that are candidates uh, to uh, provide general habitat benefits across the uh, whole project area, and then uh, sort of a fine filter priority for uh, those treatments that would benefit uh, northern Idaho ground squirrel. and. Uh, then the, the second priority, the lower priority, were uh, essentially recruits. Uh, how do you uh, accelerate the progression of medium tree size class stands and small tree size class stands into that large category, large tree size class category with low canopy closure? And so those are, <clears throat> are shown in yellow. Uh, this, this example is uh, in the uh, upper half of the Lost Creek watershed. But uh, I think as you can see from the riparian areas, the priority one stands, the uh, existing large tree size class low canopy closure stands in red, and then the priority two stands, there starts to form a, a fairly large block. And we could even add in the uh, small tree size class stands as potential re recruits into that um, and uh, those are shown in green. Let's just take a quick measurement here. I'm going to do just a quick eyeball measurement of uh, an area and you can see on the screen where I'm uh, digitizing and that's about 3,300 acres that's covered within that area that I just drew. So very roughly uh, surrounded by these riparian areas, uh, the existing stands that are more or less in the desired condition, kind of patchy compared to historical conditions. The priority one stands, including candidates for uh, uh, enhancing northern Idaho ground squirrel, and then the, uh, the recruits, either the medium or small tree size class stands that are potential recruits. So I mean, here, is, here is a block that would definitely be more than 3,000 acres. It uh, looks like it has potential. It would build on 
the existing stands there to create a larger block of, of the desired condition. And is the area eroded? Well, in, in red are the uh, existing system roads um, shown on the map. And, and uh, at least from a very simple eyeball look, I think you could say, yes, they, they're eroded. That's eroded, not eroded. Now, if we turn off the, uh, the topo map for a minute and uh, instead replace it with uh, ortho photos, uh, I think you can switch things on and off and get uh, a little bit of a reality check on, on whether or not the uh, vegetation underneath the shading really is what, uh, what it's advertised to be. Uh, I'll do that also for the, uh, the stands that are in red. Okay, so that, uh, using this approach, uh, I think that would be one type of example to give. If we move the, uh, the geography a little bit over to the um, upper west fork of the Weezer River, I think uh, there's an example there of similar conditions, and that would represent another uh, potential block. Uh, this, the stand shading here is exactly the same as previously. I think what's different here is you move to this side of the of the project area. So if we do a, a repeat the uh, the simple measurement just to see how big a block this is creating. In this case, we're up to about 2,800 acres um, enclosed, roughly by by this area. So those are two quick examples of of taking the general treatment priorities recommended by the Vegetation Committee, adding on to that a fairly simple approach um, that uh, follows the guidelines of the wildlife conservation strategy to uh, create these blocks of, of treatments. Uh, the treatments would not necessarily all be mechanical harvest. Uh, most likely it would be a combination of that and, and uh, prescribed burns. Um, but I think you can see that uh, the intent here would be to um, create blocks of, of uh, stands in the desired condition, build up the current fragments of the large tree size class um, into, uh, into bigger blocks that would have uh, benefits both for uh, habitat uh, and also for, uh, for uh, fire disturbance. Now what I don't have, but I think would be helpful for the uh, ID team to consider is something similar for watershed condition. And so let me just use in Boulder Creek as an example. Uh, the aquatic conservation strategy identifies this as a high priority. Uh, the National Watershed Condition Framework uh, um, rates this as a condition class of impaired. I think uh, if we add on the the, the system roads here, this would be a, an excellent example of, um, of uh, portraying the landscape in terms of what would it take to move that watershed from an impaired condition to a functioning at risk or even a functioning normally. Um, and the uh, two of the uh, restoration actions that would be of interest there as you look at the roads and the stream crossings would be uh, improvements at those stream crossings in order to benefit uh, fish passage. Uh, the other would be uh, the, the issue of road decommissioning and alternative uh, types of decommissioning ranging from road closure, seasonal road closure, uh, to, uh, to obliteration. And what level of activity in terms of restoration actions would it take to uh, improve that watershed condition?